Hello and welcome to this tutorial video in which I want to show you how to set up your Insta IP camera from the 2K Plus series to work with Apple's HomeKit, including HomeKit Secure Video, where the camera will upload the video into your existing iCloud account. Now it's very easy to set up your camera once you have your camera inside the network. You just simply open the web interface of your camera by typing in the IP into your existing web browser. And then you will be log once logged in, you, are, you will see the web interface just like here. And then you can go to settings on the top left. And here you will go to the smart home section for your camera and then um, open the home kit menu. All you have to do here is to activate HomeKit. Once you activate HomeKit and then apply, then you will see this uh, QR code, which you will later need inside your home app when using the iPhone or iPad um, to add your camera to Apple's HomeKit. Now, that is actually it for the camera part, but there's one small thing I want to explain to you. Um, currently, there is some limitation um, from Apple's side for the HomeKit integration. For example, Apple HomeKit only supports the H.264 compression, meaning newer cameras usually use the H.265 compression since the video will be compressed a little bit more. Just And if you have like 4K resolutions or 2K resolutions, it will be less traffic inside your network. But since Apple doesn't support H.265. Um, we are forced to use H.264. So, um, yeah, there's another limitation. Apple also only supports full HD. And therefore, the our 2K Plus cameras, they have th three streams in total. One is the 2K Plus stream. Then we have a full HD stream and we have an HD stream. In order to show it to you, I close this menu here and open multimedia and video settings. Now this will make it more easy for you to understand. And here we have the 2K plus stream, which is 1440p. And you see here the video codec is set to H.265. So this is the default setting and the camera's recordings, everything will be in H.265 um, since if you activate, for example, SD card recording, it will always use the highest resolution by default. Now you can also change that in the settings, but by default it will use this resolution. But for HomeKit, HomeKit by default will use the full HD resolution since it doesn't support any higher resolutions at the moment. And once we click here on 180p, you will see that the video codec for 180p will be H.264 base profile. Now you could change that here to H.265, but then HomeKit would not work anymore. So you need to leave this on the H.264 setting. Same goes for the 720p stream. Also leave that one on H.264 if you are using HomeKit, because those both streams will be needed to uh, work in H.264 in order to um, for HomeKit to fully work. So we close this window again, then we open the Smart Home section and we up open HomeKit in order to uh, add our camera now with our iPhone and iPad. So now we will switch to the iPhone and iPad in order to add the camera. On your iPhone, click on the Home app and inside your Home app, go to the plus sign and, add and go to Add Accessory. Now once you click Add Accessory, hold the iPhone over your, to your screen, like the web interface that we have opened before from your camera. And then now we can say we want to add the camera to home. Now this message now shows that this uh, camera is not certified as an accessory yet by Apple. We are still in the process of undergoing the certification process from Apple, so it will still take a little bit until the camera is an official um, accessory, but there is no limitations at the moment. So you can totally use the camera inside your home app without any limitations. And also the HomeKit recording 
will work without any problems. So we click Add Anyway, and then the camera will be added to our home. This might take a short moment until the camera and the home app has have communicated between each other. And now we can select the room in which we want to add the camera. In our case, we just call the room room. And then here you we could either continue or at the bottom you also see an identify option. Let's say you have 10 cameras and you are setting them up all at once. By using the identify option, the status LEDs, the red and the blue status LED on the camera will start blinking on the camera that is currently being set up. So this way you can identify multiple or like a camera, which one you are setting currently. So we click on continue. Um, now we can give the camera a name. We just leave it with the default name, but you could name the camera, especially if you have multiple cameras, that this makes sense so that you can distinguish the cameras later. We continue. And now we have the recording settings. That is the HomeKit Secure Video. So here we can do two settings. We have the setting for when we are at home. For example, now it, by default it is set to stream and stream. That means once we are home, we only want to stream the video, but we don't want to record. And currently it's also set when we are away, like not at home, then we also just want to stream, like we only want to access the video over the internet, but we don't want to record it. Um, this setting I would recommend you to, to change because you most probably want to also record. In our case, we click on when we are at home, then we set that to stream and allow recording. And now instead of don't, don't click to continue at the bottom, but here select when away, and then you can do the same setting here. And now we have set both to stream and allow recording. And then we go to continue to save it. Next, we have two sensors that will be added to our home app. One is the motion sensor. That just means once the camera detects a motion, then we can use the sensor to um, do any further action within our home app. For example, switch some light on or off. Um, and the, the other one is the switch here. It's just called switch, it, but it, what it does, it you can turn the IR LEDs, the infrared night vision on and off from your camera. So in case for any reason you want to turn it off, you can also do that within the home app. And we just simply continue and then we click done. And that's actually it. Now we have added the camera into our home app. Now, if you're wondering, um, like here we see the image of the camera and this image is always uh, refreshed at every 10 seconds. Now this is a default by uh, Apple. This is not something that we set um, and you can also not change that time. So the home app by default will refresh the image every 10 seconds and then you it will be displayed here on the screen. And now we can click into the onto the image, then the video stream will open from our camera. And there we will also see the recording once we have recorded something. Now I will click onto it. And then you can see here that we have the live video feed in the middle. And at the bottom, we have a timeline which shows the recordings. And it will also show the object which has been detected inside the video. For example, I will go down here and we can see that now the video will start playing. Someone was walking there and then it will show. And once all the recordings have played, it will go back to the live video feed of the camera. Now we can go on the top. You see the icon with the gear. That is the settings for the camera. What we can do here is that we go a little bit further down and then we have the recording options. Here we can also change what we have said earlier that once we're home or once we are away, we want to stream or uh, also allow recording. But once you click on more options, here you have the possibility to say that 
you, for example, only want to detect people or you only want to detect vehicles. By default, it's set to people, animals and vehicles should be detected and also that audio should be recorded. But you can customize these options here. And the way it works is that once the camera detects a motion, like this will be the local or let's say the camera's own motion detection will be used for that. So you have to do those settings inside your camera's web interface. You will do set the, do all the motion detection settings there. And then once the camera detects a motion, it will upload the video in small packages to the Apple Bridge. I will explain later what the Apple Bridge is. And then the the, the video will be analyzed by Apple. And once Apple detects one of those options here, for example, it detects a person or it detects an animal, then it will actually start using the video stream from there and then cut it accordingly uh, and show it inside the home app. So the camera, once it detects a motion, will upload a video stream for one minute to the bridge. And then from there, it will be uploaded to the iCloud. Now the bridge is the, I, I just go back here so we can, let's say, see the video stream while I explain you. The bridge can be a HomePod, a HomePod mini, or it can be an Apple TV. And the camera itself actually only connects locally to that bridge. And the, once the video is done, the video will be loaded to the bridge and then the bridge will upload it into the internet um, so that the camera is actually not communicating with the outside world let's say um, but apple's bridge will be doing the communication same as if you open the home app for example outside of your home and you want to access the video stream now that's no problem in general um, but the communication will always go over the bridge so you don't need to do any kind of uh, router settings or whatever for your camera. Your camera will actually stay totally local. And um, once you access the home app, you connect to your bridge, which will then show you the video stream of the camera. That's just small background uh, on, on how the whole thing works. And I go back here on top on to the settings because there's one more setting I want to show you which is the camera status light. You see it's activated by default. And uh, that means that the status LEDs, red and blue, will indicate if the camera is either live streaming or recording. And in case you want to turn that off, you can do that here inside the settings. You just turn camera status light off and then those LEDs will not um, shine anymore. Other than that, I think we have gone through mostly all the settings here. There's some more settings. You can do automation, for example, with the motion detection um, sensor that was added. And um, yeah, turn on the lights, for example. And you can also do some other seti settings. I'm sure from time to time, Apple will also update the possibilities that are possible with home, with the home app or with HomeKit in general. But um, yeah, Remember, currently there are some limitations, such as uh, Apple only supports full HD resolutions, um, only the H.264 compression, and maybe some other limitations, which are not, um, yeah, let's say, the camera's fault, but rather than Apple's limitation on the HomeKit standard for, for cameras. For example, another one would be that the currently HomeKit um, doesn't support any pan tilt cameras or pan tilt actions. Um, so even we have a we have pan tilt cameras. Um, there is no yeah pan tilt that you can use inside the home app. You will therefore always need to use the third party or manufacturer's app. In our case, the InstaVision app, which is for free, in order to rotate your camera or move it to different positions. So that's it for some limitations on ins, uh, on HomeKit. Uh, but other than that, you can use every everything that the Home app or HomeKit does have to offer. And I wish you a lot of fun with your camera. If you have any questions, please write it in the comments of the video. Um, we are very happy to make further videos in case you request any other explanations. 
and yeah, I wish you a lot of fun with your camera. Have a nice day and hope to see you at the next video.